grain of rice is going to tip the scale. Just remember that, lads. With his fourth point of the game, the great supporters are coming under the park. It's over. It's over. Have you seen a better Westmead performance than this they've given in the second half? John Heslin now as a support player, may not need him. Go straight, he's scored! Back down here by Roxy Brown. The red line is what's the goals, and Westmead are champions. Agony, we've said both of the two Agony, we've said Artigan Moltoon is coming in. with Kieran Martin, was the captain until he got injured, here he is, it's Martin, Kieran Martin! Good morning everybody and welcome to the third in our series of podcasts that will go out on Ear V TV on the YouTube channel and today, this morning, I'm joined by our football county senior football manager Desi Dolan, Desi you're welcome on to this podcast this morning. Thank you very much. Um, I want to, <coughs> we've lots of things to get through but before I go into talking about your own playing career and your experiences down through the years and that, I want to just take you back to just over 12 months ago and tell us how you how you got involved with the senior county team. Uh, I suppose I was working in RTE since I retired, so I was probably doing it for six or seven years. Um, I probably, at my age, probably still playing a bit Gary Castle, so then I was kind of feeling a little bit like if I didn't maybe get involved with Westmead at that point, I probably was never going to do it because you need to keep up to speed with the modern ways and the modern techniques and all that kind of stuff, um, which keeps coming at you. Um, but at the same time, I just felt, as somebody that was so passionate about playing for Westmead, um, when the offer came from Jack Cooney, I thought it was a great offer to get involved because I knew John Kane was going in as well, so I'm kind of best mates with John. So, um, And ultimately, I wanted to see could I add some value to Westmead and going forward. And with the fact that I have a son and a couple of girls in... in um, that will be involved in Westmead maybe in later years. Like I just wanted to kind of get associated and and use my time um, for something in the county. Yeah, well that's good to hear that you don't intend to walk away from things anyway. Look, to be honest, you've probably been our most high pro- highest profile footballer, certainly in the last 20 years yourself, John, Rory O'Connell, Gary Connerton, yeah. the, pe- the people that won the All-Stars. And it, you know, I think the whole county got a great boost when we seen that you were coming back and getting involved with the team. Yeah, well, I think it's important, like, because, um, as I said, like, I was up in Dublin doing the commentary and that, and it's grand, but, it, like, I suppose you're doing it because it's a job, let's say, but I wasn't kind of fulfilling the needs that I had, and the needs that I had is that I'm a Westmead man, I'm a proud Westmead man, I love watching the lads, I love watching girls as well in sport, like, so to be involved um, with your own county is magical, something special, like, and when I go back, let's say, to last year's matches in Crow Park, like there were massive occasions, but there were because it was the Westmead people. It was because of the families that you know and the clubs that you like. You you killing each other during the year, but then when you go to Crow Park on a day like that, and it's a magical day for the county. There's something special about it, and I think we all have great memories, and they're the memories that you keep going for a lifetime. Yeah, the same faces turning up, same supporters, <laughs> same families. You well, know, that's it. Like, and you have to acknowledge that. Like, I go to matches and um, I meet people after the game, and they come up to you like and. Do you know, like it's 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 great it's great to see the loyalty that they have, like through the good days and the <laughs> bad days, because we've had bad days like as well, and I've been I've had my bad days, but at the same time, um, to see familiar faces is very reassuring on a pitch, and and the loyalty supporters show and the dedication that they show through long winters in Ireland, um, has to be acknowledged, and like I love meeting people, and I love talking to people, and that's one of the great things about the GA. Like, I'm in Westmead, I go anywhere, I talk to them, I talk to the clubs, go around. It's, it's a great joy to be kind of, be let's say, a foot in the door before you go and meet people. And, it's, it, it, and I find it now across Ireland, like, when you're going places, you can kind of you can kind of break bread with people, have a chat, and the GA is always there for everybody. Yeah, well, I suppose the RTE role, as well as your playing career, would have given you that, that option that your face was on television, your voice was on television, everyone knew you. Yeah. But I su- yeah, it was. I suppose the, the RT thing was a good thing to do. It was a good experience. Like, um, there's nothing like um, sitting with the likes of Joe Brawley and Pat Spillane going toe to toe and having rows and having a bit of banter and a bit of debate, like, and seeing what really goes on behind the scenes. Because, um, and I suppose people would be surprised the length of time that the day takes for a Sunday game program. Like, there's a lot of time um, and energy goes into the the, pro- the production of a show, like. 
but it's only when you you see the behind the scenes stuff. Um, it was a great experience and quite enjoyable. Yeah, but you're looking. You know now from the other side, there's a lot of preparation goes into preparing the team for, you know, for what what our supporters see is 70 minutes on a pitch on on a given Sunday or whatever. So what last year you went in, you were in. J Jack was the manager. You were you were doing the coaching work, some coaching work with him yourself and John Keane. Yeah. Is that that what the way it was last year? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose I, I, we had a good we had a good combination. Jack was um, obviously very thorough at his job um, and very very dedicated, um, put an awful lot of time into it. Myself and John came in. I suppose naturally, I was helping the forwards. John would help the defensive side of it, and then I suppose the analysis side of things as well is something that I used to enjoy doing, just to help Jack and I suppose give it a different flavor, a different voice to what Jack would be doing. So I was trying to get the balance all the time. Um, and it worked really well. I think as, as a as a unit, we kind of gelled very well, and we had a nice kind of we bounced off each other extremely well as well. And and like like that, like the league wasn't hectic last year, but then we had a great run in the Talton Cup, and I think um, they're the memories that we'll take with us. Yeah, and you know, I suppose it came as a shock to all of us outside of the inner circle mm. as such when when Jack announced that he had to step down. And I suppose it was going to be either yourself or John were going to be the natural successor to come in there. How did that work out? Did the county board approach you? What, what way did it work out yeah, to end it up in the well role? Well, I suppose it was a shock because it was it was a shock to you. But it was a bigger shock to us because 12 months previously I was sitting down and I was I was leaving RT, but I didn't think um, after one year that the possibility of becoming the manager might be on the agenda. Like, um, I suppose the fact that I got on well with the lads and the fact that... Um, Jack had got his job in Crow Park. There was just no option. It was Jack's gone, so who's going to stand up? And um, in fairness to Jack, he was very supportive, saying he believed that you know you could kind of add some value to the job. And and then I suppose then at the next step on that was maybe meeting up with Frank Meskel and seeing and and the way it transpired, maybe because we were in the job as coaches, it was a natural progression. But it wasn't always the case, and maybe there wasn't too many other people interested in the job. Whatever the case may be, it fell on my doorstep. And and what's fair, you won't pass you. And like a very supportive wife, and all the things that I do, <laughs> you'd need a supportive wife to be honest. But um, in saying that, um, as a Westmead person and someone who dedicated a lot, of large part of my life to playing football, when the job comes up like this, we kind of have to go for it. And did you feel? You were ready for it at the time. You hadn't got that uh, a lot of a lot of experience, let's say, as a club manager, as uh, involved with underage inter county or stuff like that. Was it a big change to oh, step across that jump. line? Yeah, no, it's a massive jump, like because like when you're um when you're the coach, you can kind of hide away, like you go into the dressing room and just sit in there. No one's really looking for the ball, aren't you? There's, you know, like every every question kind of falls in my door, and that's through supporters, through the media, through clubs. You know, looking for pitches, doing all the different the general stuff like that you have to do as a manager, like organising things. So all that comes through you, and then you have your, you have your 34 or 5 players or that you have to mind all the time working with Damien Gavin, and then you have the county board and the different dynamic that's there. And like there's lots of dynamics that you have to get used to, and all of it is going through you. And I suppose that's the part of it that is difficult and very time-consuming. That's the part of it that you, you learn quickly at your job. So there's so many variables in it. Yeah, there's a friend of mine that would be involved in it, and he always says there ha it has to be somebody's gig. Yeah. So now it's your gig, and uh, and you know the problems with where you can be good cop as a, as a coach, you're now bad cop as the boss. Ah, yeah, it's different. It is different. Um, but I suppose the thing that reassured me going into the job, and the reason I did the job, is because I'd, a lot of the people were staying with me, and they're a lot of good people. Like you've John Angle, the SNC, Paddy Walsh was the kit man. JK, obviously, John was going to stay on as well. So I'd Mick Dillon in charge. He was there as well, and he's helping out. But then I suppose what I felt I needed was that bit of experience, and I, I sought out Jason Sherlock. Yeah, now that you, you just beat me to that. I was just wondering how he got involved with you. I suppose I know I played Railway Cup with Jason Sherlock, and that's the thing. I was fortunate for playing with all the times I played. I played with an awful lot of people over the years, and, and through the compromise rules and trip through Railway Cups and through all-star trips and different things, I kind of connected with it. An awful lot of people around the country, an awful lot of players, like, and I suppose the fact that Jason was involved with Dublin winning All Ireland, I was like, right, what do I want? I want the best coach I can get for Westmead, and who's the best coach I can get? So, I had a lot of meetings with Jason. This was a big step for him to kind of leave to Dublin, come out. <laughs> it's hard to get the Dubs <laughs> out of Dublin at the best of times. Past Livy Valley <laughs> seems to be a stretch, 
So I had to meet him five or six times to convince him to kind of that it was the right thing to do to come down, do the job. And and I suppose the relationship I had him, um, he kind of trusted what I was trying to do. So he was happy to come on board then. But like the fact that he was involved with, you know, like Sam Maguire was coming into his dressing room and he was with the players, the best players in the country. Like that experience is what's something that I felt maybe I was lacking and Jason was bringing that to the table. And, he, ha- and he has brought to the table. I'm sure he got a great... You got a great sort of kick on from the players by by be introducing him into that environment, which he. Well, I suppose it's just best practice. Like, so the lads can ask Jason, and they do ask him, like, "What's the story here? What do you need to do there?" And like, that's it needs to be open and needs to be honest. Like, and the conversation needs to flow, and that's the way it is. Like, and Jason, I suppose, fits the groove. Like, he fits the profile that we want. Is that the young players now? have questions and need to be reassured and he's somebody that's very willing to give his time very helpful to all the lads and he's a great asset to Westmead football um just on on that and on the league campaign probably didn't go as well as you would have hoped well you'd like to win every game <laughs> <laughs> doesn't always work out like that no fair enough yeah um i suppose the first day out the first day out came probably a little bit quick for us it was it was calvin at home um, but we were down some of our key players in that game. So if you take Jamie and Jack, Ray, Luke didn't start. And then I think when the lads came off early as well. So like you're you're losing out on, I suppose, some of the players with that bit of an experience against a Cavan team that were highly motivated to beat us, <laughs> given the fact that a couple of months previous, we got one over them in Crow Park. So that was difficult. But um, there was... Some very good performances, and then there was times in the league where you'd be frustrated, kind of scratching your head a little bit, where they kind of dipped off in their form, and it's trying to get that 70-minute performance and the consistency is what we need to be working on. And that's the reality. Um, some of the games were difficult. Um, I'd, I'd have issues maybe with a couple of decisions David Goff gave against us up and down, um, and that was a massive night for us because we played so well. We were in a good commanding position. And then all of a sudden, a couple of things went against us and the result went. And I suppose that game, if I was to look at it, that game probably cost us promotion that night, losing by a point. And if people were at it, and there wasn't maybe a massive crowd from Westmead at the game, but if people were at it for 50 minutes, we dominated the match. And then for when the wheels came off, uh, everything seemed to go against us at that stage. Yeah, and you know, you, you become very helpless on a sideline when things do start to go well, it was, a, it was a, I suppose what you learn when you go um, up north, some of the games up there is that the atmosphere, um, the stand was full of down supporters and the, the kind of the kind of wilder team on. It was very loud, very aggressive. A couple of decisions went against us. They grew they grew wings at that stage. And look, at these things happen. That's sport. When it goes against you, it's very hard to change it. Like, But it was disappointing. And then equally, like the Fermanagh match, while we didn't, uh, to be honest, that was disappointing because I didn't feel we performed particularly well on the day. We lost by a point, but in reality, we didn't perform to the, the standards that we want. And that's the job that we have is to kind of get that consistency in the team. Like, Yeah, we're going forward now. We're looking forward to Leinster quarter final now coming up the week after next against another Wiley Oil campaigner that you would have come across on the sideline, Mickey Hart and Loud. Yeah. So that's going to be a big game for us. Oh, it's a massive game. And uh, you have to say, like, in terms of Loud's progression with Mickey Hart, they've done extremely well. 4-3 to 2. And possibility, the last game of the league to get to 1, which is a really incredible achievement. They're a very strong team, very organised. And, like, when you have Mickey Hart on the sideline, you know that it's best practice. Very experienced. So we know it's, a, it's going to be a very difficult assignment. It's up in Navin. I was hoping it was going to be in Tullamore. I don't know what happened there. But um, it's in Navin. So, like, we just go up and we prepared extremely well. The last couple of weeks has been good since the league is finished. We've worked very, very hard. Like, so that's all we can do. But, like, I suppose the, the main message then is to try to get that 70 minute performance. Yeah. But I suppose the other upside to winning the Talton Cup last year is that. Win or lose against Lowe, whether we go further or not, we're still going to go into the Sam Maguire qualifiers anyway. Oh, it's very exciting. It really is. And, and, and do you know, like, if you were to say to me what was the best part of winning uh, the Talton Cup, I would say the support and seeing the kids wearing the jersey. So no matter where you went around, there was a great, there was a real feel-good factor about Westmead football. And hopefully now this summer, like, we'll be seeded. Um, so we'll be playing, like, Division One teams. Like, with the possibility of Kerry down in Killarney or Dublin and Mullingar, you know, Galway, all these teams, are, it's a strong possibility that that's the reality. There's a game at home in Cusick Park, there's a game away and a game in neutral venues. 
it's massive matches and it's a massive opportunity for us. I think we were a good summer team as well and massive opportunities for us. But um, I think the All-Ireland Series, the format of it is going to be quite exciting and some great days ahead for Westmead football. Yeah, and, and following from that then, we'll have to do our, our utmost next year to make sure that we get out of the beach. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm not putting any yeah. pressure on you now, Des. You're on like oh, that. Sure. You know, You're saying what everyone's thinking, yeah. Well, it, like, that's the reality. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you look at Division 2 now, like Division Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Limerick Very and Clare, yeah, Limerick and Clare got relegated, but like Mead and Kildare are looking now to get into that provincial spot, so that they they get there, they're guaranteed the the All Ireland series. But like, there's no guarantees. Like, so, um, we're very privileged that we won the Talent Cup last year, and that that's the reward. The reward yeah. for the lads winning it is that they get their state place in the All Ireland series. But equally, the importance of then promotion again next year, that's that's obviously on the agenda. It's always on the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> well, it has to be. You can't stand still in, no, in any, like in any aspect thing, of like your life. I think for a county like Westmead, where we need to see progression is in the league. So if you go up in the league, that's your place. And, and if you're not promote, if you're not going up, that's just the reality. You need to work harder and you need to... Because I think the league, in fairness, as a competition, is a very good competition. Um, there's seven difficult games, but the reality is that's your place. And come here, with the, with the change of the structure of, say, the county year and the club year, how, how are you finding that? Are you in favour of that? Do you prefer a short a short year that ends earlier? To be honest, looking at the demands of an intercounty player, so our lads are five, six times a week, there's two, three, four sessions, and then they have the gym work. Like, But the reality is... Um, the demands we played five games in six weeks and like they're amateur players it's very very demanding on amateur players like because they're picking up knocks along the way they're getting injuries all of this kind of stuff then they have to get you know on a bus drive two or three hours and then head to work the next morning so that's very very difficult and i see it firsthand so that like and we have a lot of lads on dublin commuting down the road as well like so the time and effort that they give it and like i know every day it doesn't go well but if supporters knew the dedication that the players put in and the effort that they put in, I think they'd be amazed. Yeah, look at that. I, I think from one thing we've gathered with, with our other podcast with, with Joe Fortune that, you know, every county is putting in that hard work. And, and you know, like you say, supporters are fickle. They, uh, you know, they can't understand why he, he kicked it wide from 20 yards with someone breathing down his neck or whatever. Mm. But these lads are putting in a huge I effort. I know, and in fairness, I seen Leitrim last last week in New York. Like, and in fairness, to, they played at 11 o'clock at night. They're over in New York. It's a totally different pitch surface that they play on. Yeah. They travel, the jet lag, all of that stuff. Like, And I, I know Leitrim, my dad trained Leitrim. It's a great county, great football people. And Andy Moran's a great young coach as well, trying his best. And like everything going against you, and you know the, the result went New York's way, but I I felt sorry for Leitrim. I'm delighted for New York because I played football over there as well at one time. Um, but at the same time, it's just the expectations then from supporters like it, they can't understand maybe a defeat like that. Um, they have a very good coach. They're working very hard. Like what we said, all of them Leitrim players didn't go over there to lose that game. Yeah, and, then and that's the reality. And then to get it in the face, then yeah, you, we 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 seen where the county board come out and criticise. You know, for things that have been said yeah, in social and media. Is, like, there's a lot of that. Like, I see the players, the dedication time to put into it, and then you have social media and different things like that. Like, and it's like, I suppose, the, like, lads are connected to their phones nowadays more than ever. So it, it can be hurtful, like, and that's just the reality. But at the same time, uh, if you're an inter county player and you've got to that level, I'd say somewhere along the line, resilience came into it all. So you need that bit of resilience and you need to understand that. Um, like people don't understand the the effort that you go to to dedicate. It doesn't make sense to do it, but people still do it and they do it for a reason. Well, I suppose we have the keyboard warriors that will hide behind, uh, you know, a, an emoji or whatever that they don't have to show their name or their face, and it, it's easy to criticise when they don't know exactly what goes on and the effort that these guys are putting in. Like you say, amateur players. Yeah, no, that's the, that's the reality of it. Like, um, like it's just just a part of society, but like at the same time. Uh, I do think and I believe like our players um uh, you need resilience you need you need to be tough you need to be able to deal with a bit of crit like when you go to play your club games <laughs> and you head out to Collery or you head to these places <laughs> you get you know the lads that we I think of a few places <laughs> I went to over the years there's a few um uh, supporters and it's funny because when you meet them off the pitch then they'd be kind of going oh sorry about that I didn't actually <laughs> mean that. but like that's part and parcel of it all 
Yeah, she look, that's the that's the enjoyment of the crack in the that's GA, the that, and that's the way it should be left on the field. Absolutely, and move yeah. on from that's there. The after, yeah. come here. I'm going to take you back now to to you growing up as a young fella, and you mentioned your father already. But he must have been a huge influence on you growing up. Ah, he was. Yeah, in fairness, um, I. Th- uh, I suppose he trained teams all over. He trained Offaly and Longford and that. So I just used to go with him. Like I dragged Nathan along today. I just um, so I used to go with him, and then I uh, I say it was thirteen or fourteen. I was training with senior teams around the place. Now, in fairness, Dad had nearly warned him, "Don't hit my goss," <laughs> and, and, and they'd listen to him as well because he was. But um, then I used to train with them. I trained with Gary Castle, but uh, he was an intercounty manager at the time. So like the environment I grew up in was just football. Um, so most I dedicated everything in terms of preparation. So uh, it was fortunate then we had a great team in Westmead that we were successful. But um, to get that under twenty one, we can remember them yeah. days were great days. And it, like I was saying, the lads lost the other night in the under twenties. But we had two Leinster under twenty one titles, like and then the All Ireland as well. So there was great times around that. So that was great to be. But yeah, no. In terms of growing up, like um, I it was just, uh, I kind of learned the hard way by going around the clubs and learning getting the knocks early and all that kind of stuff and a bit of resilience as i said is important like and and the, the one thing my dad would always say was the skills it wasn't about you know being strong it wasn't about it was like can you do the skills can you dummy to the left can you dummy to the right kicking freeze off the ground so them skills probably lasted me all my lifetime so when the pace went and the other things went I still had the skills so he taught you the skills and he taught, taught Gary the, the <laughs> other side is that, is that what you're trying to say to us here <laughs> Gary uh, Gary had a certain role and is important as well like you need to be protected and that's the reality <laughs> um, and he was very good at that and if there was ever and it wasn't me it was anyone on the pitch he was playing with and that loyalty um, is an important factor when you're out on the pitch because um, what people don't understand is it's not always a nice game. It can be tricky too. Like and stuff goes on and has to be dealt with. Yeah, we'll we leave deal it. With it. We'll, <laughs> we'll leave the darker side to the darker we side. We deal with it whatever <laughs> way we have. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you have to play football nice. Sometimes you have to play it tough. And yeah. you can play it anyway. That's important. Yeah, well, at, at the level of juvie, you've, I'm sure you've seen all sides of it. I've seen it all. And even from the likes of the compromise rules. Now you, you're touching that yourself. Yeah. That, that must have been an eye opener. Oh, and, cer- and certainly you'd want to be going in with your eyes open crazy. there. Yeah. To be honest, it was um, it was all hands on deck. If there was a row, you had all in. <laughs> It was a wild game. Um, but in fairness, it kind of spilled. I was there in 2006. I think there was a lad, Chris Johnson, there. And he was starting swinging. Like, he was like a cannon. He was taking lads out left, right, and centre. Um, but the game kind of got... It just spilled over to... It just went a bit too far. Um, like, there was an awful lot of stuff going on in them games. And the reality is the Australians were a little bit threatened by a crowd of Irish amateurs um, coming over to their stadiums. Um, we played in... We played... It was an indoor arena. It was a Telstra Dome. It was called 60,000 people massive atmosphere but they weren't they, they didn't like to be as professionals and great athletes the australians are powerful athletes but they don't like losing so the threat of us coming over as amateurs kind of to their professional game they they knew how to sort us out now to be fair <laughs> yeah well of course th- they were kicking with a round ball which they weren't used to but p- which at uh, the fitness levels you have to remember like if you're a professional athlete there's another there's another couple of gears to go like so they they were supremely supremely fit athletes like some of them are on contracts of a million dollars like and you're playing against them so that's the reality but uh, they train so hard like they're fabulous athletes and you were hoping to come back with your head still on your shoulders and well, go back like to college go or back go back to your teaching job back or whatever to yeah, back to reality but it was a great experience i was very lucky the experience i got my first year doing that was 99 i just came out of um i was about 19 and then i was with anthony toll seamus mine and trevor giles graham gerty um there was great, great players, Karen Wheel and Dermot Early, all these lads were on it. And I suppose f- being in that environment and being with that culture and the quality of player, John McDermott, like what you did was you learned an awful lot. And at a very young age, I've g- I seen the best practice. And like if you're observant and you look at what's going on and you can see what lads are doing, like you can look and see this lad is at this level and that's where you need to get to. And if by watching what to do and their behaviours and patterns and all that, you can... You can learn an awful lot. And I was lucky to get them lessons early in my career. Going on from, from you know, co- well, co- really coming back to the under-21, again, you soldiered with Luke. Ah, and again, who must have been a great, ex- ex- great influence man. on you as well. Great man. Um, that's Luke Dempsey for yeah, our viewers. Yeah, don't. Luke Dempsey was just such a great guy to everybody. And we'd all have great time for him because um, 
he just was a great man like giving you great confidence and belief in your own ability like you always felt a bit better than ever you were in reality and he brought everyone along and it was a great atmosphere a great vibe and the funny thing was we never really felt at any stage we were going to definitely win a game we always felt we had something to prove along the way but like when the, the games that we played and the players that we disposed of and the teams and you think of Kildare and then Leash were great teams at that time but um, they were massive matches and, and I remember the final we played, like I marked Tom O'Sullivan and I marked Mike McCarthy in the final. Uh, Tom O'Shea, Tomas O'Shea as you call him, um, Tomas was playing wing back. You had Noel Kennelly and Ty Kennelly, you had Adam McGarrett, you had probably Paul Galvin as well. So like you had household that names on the other team that, that we that did. That was a dream team from Kerry, wasn't it? That was a dream team. Like, uh, we won the under-20 All-Ireland All and uh, them seven or eight players I mentioned all won a senior All-Ireland a year later with Kerry and Paddy. But... Um, no, it was amazing. It was an amazing, and I will be very, very grateful for the time that Luke gave us. He was an he was an exceptional guy, exceptional manager as well. Yeah, it was great time to be a Westmead supporter. And we're just talking off camera before we started the podcast that you've been involved with Westmead teams and have really have had a big influence on two different things through the GA. And one was the qualifiers. Yeah. And that year, two thousand and one was yeah. a magic year within the county as well with the battles against Mead and the trips to Crop Park. And, you know, it, it really probably gave, gave the qualifying games the status that it was crying yeah, out for. it's true. I think we played eight, eight matches that year. Um, in Let's say we, we did the Leinster Championship and then we had a great run. I think the first game was down in Wexford and we drew that. I think we were nine points down and we got a draw mad late and then we brought them up to Mullingar and got rid of them. Um, there was a couple of games there, but like it's funny because like Westmead have great players, um, and Rory got his all star that year. But like Rory's just incredible. He played Mayo down in the height, and it's funny because it's amazing the way things change. But the warm up back then was you'd run from one side of the pitch to the other three or four times, and then you do a little stretch, and that was the game on. But every time we'd run from one side to the other, the crowd there was such a great Westmead support that the crowd would cheer us over and back as we were going across the height. It was massive, massive games. Um, but great players as well. You think of Martin Fanning and Jerry, even all these guys. We had great quality footballers, and that's something that Westmead can always produce as quality footballers. Yeah, and I suppose the thing then, we had the, the introduction of the late great Paddy O'Shea mm. as manager who took the thing on that extra step. Yeah, I suppose Paddy, like the thing about Paddy was um, league football, he'd absolutely no interest in. Didn't really understand why he'd even talk out for that, but we had to fulfill the fixtures. We couldn't really figure out what was going on because we didn't know, you know, he was such a big personality and we survived in Division 1. I suppose in reality it's a massive thing to do because of the quality of the players. Um, and then what happened then, in Balnagor one night, party comes out, he the, the little shorts on, the white legs on him and he comes out trotting out to the pitch. And as soon as the championship was in flow or coming around the corner, he just changed totally. He just, Tomas got us physically ready we were extremely fit but a couple of weeks out from the championship party was kind of dialing it in and every game was in Crow Park so party in Crow Park just came to life he was magical like the dressing room the speeches it was just magical it was a great experience and every challenge was a massive ex challenge you haven't beat Offaly in 60 years you haven't bet Dublin in 50 years you haven't won a semi-final to get to a Leinster mm -hmm. final so there was all these hurdles that we had to overcome but to be honest, uh, the charisma Paddy had and and the level he expected off his players was just something we probably weren't used to. Well, I tell you, I, I remember going on a couple of different nights up to Balnagore because, you mean, the excitement around the whole county at that time, but to see the train and the Tomas of Flaherty and, and Paddy Pudgy <laughs> through, you know, on, on the sand track in Balnagore. I, I, I was sorry for you. I, I seen players just, you know, emptying uh, themselves. It was unbelievable, yeah. We had... Um, we had like sand track obviously was a big thing like um, I avoided that myself <laughs> quite a bit I don't know how I avoided it but I did uh, I was going off on the compromise rules or different things but the lads were getting slaughtered they were running backwards up the hills oh. and all sorts uh, but like very much a, I think it was a Mick O'Dwyer thing is the wire to wires but we were doing wire to wires on the double and then he'd throw a ball up so it was kind of like triple wire to wires yeah. <laughs> I don't think I think um, but like You'd be knackered and then to throw a ball up and we'd kill each other and that was it and there was no feeling sorry for you. It was just getting it was just building the resilience, building the building the fitness levels and the desire and um I don't know actually would you get away with it now. <laughs> I don't know, would you? 
I think you'd be robbed for cruelty to, to so, put yeah, lads no, through what, what was going on it, there. At the time, it worked, and it was probably what we needed. Like, um, like to be a winner, um, you just need that little bit of edge. Like, and I think maybe we developed that bit of edge over the course of the year. Uh, Come here, I have to ask you one question about that campaign in 2004. Have you regrets over the All Ireland quarter final? Oh yeah. Well, like the thing about it is, if you talk to me, I only can remember defeats really. Like the the winning matches, I kind of just park very quickly. Um, when I get when I have defeats and that, that's what eats away at you, um, and disappointments. But yeah, no, we sh- probably should have bet Derry absolutely. And if we did beat Derry, that's the regret is that we would have got an opportunity to play against Paddy's team, and Paddy was sacked out of Kerry. So the motivation then for Paddy would have been <laughs> <laughs> off the charts. But just the way, and it was. I remember I scored a point at, I'd say it was about sixty-seven minutes to put us a point up, and. Then it just as we just kind of dipped, and I think, lo- like the reality is, by winning the Leinster, we kind of got to the summit, and that desire and hunger just left us a small bit. And I just, I do, I do think we didn't perform maybe to the levels we had to that year. It was just disappointing, yeah. Looking yeah, but look at that was to be expected because, you know, any anyone at the start of the year, if you'd offered Westmead a Leinster title. <laughs> would, have, would have taken both arms yeah, head well two thing, legs and everything when you're a child and someone says there's four co- counties in the country that have never won anything at senior level and Westmead was one of them it's not a nice thing so we corrected that at yeah. least put that one to bed yeah, anyway absolutely. looking at going forward I'm sure you'll be hoping that we can progress and make more progress and go back there we've been in a couple of Leinster finals albeit against Dublin or whatever mm. who, who've kind of lapped the field at the moment but you know I'm sure you'll be hoping that they're coming back to it and, and other counties will be closing that gap on them anyway Ah yeah well it, like it, the, the reality is that the Dublin team was probably the greatest team that ever played football and, and in fairness Pat Spillane's team was at that time and people probably didn't think another team would come along with that golden generation and it may be time, like there's still some of the lads are playing like Fenton and Kilkenny, James McCarthy. They're still playing, so yeah. I suppose the ref- you can't reflect on it. But like they've been absolutely incredible servants. See Stephen Cluxton's back as well. <laughs> but like I'm just saying, like they 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 defined the game, they changed the game, the standards that they set. Like it was just unfortunate, maybe for us me that they came against them at that time. But yeah, no, they're probably coming back to the pack a little bit now. I'm still saying they're fairly decent. <laughs> yeah, now, you yeah, know. yeah. Come here before I finish up. I want to ask you just a couple of personal things on, on. You know your own career and, and different players that you played against. Toughest mm. club player that you played on? Uh, well, I'm fortunate that most of my career, John was maybe intermediate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now he did play against John, but like, and I marked John for 15 years in training. But John Kane was a disaster of a corner back to mark because he was so good. Uh, Sean Marty was a tough opponent, very, um, very diligent in his job of trying to trying to you know put you off your game um Seamus Mine is like a Rolls Royce he could stuff he was doing he was you were just watching him you know and when you should be kicking points yourself mm. uh Carl Lacey I always found a really good player as well so I was really unfortunate that I used to get the best defenders <laughs> in the country quite regularly yeah well so that, that, that there was a lot Anthony Lynch was a great player um, and he'd be kind of grunting, running after you, and you could the grunt would get closer to you <laughs> as you were running for the ball. But it was very <laughs> off button, but he was a brilliant defender as well. So uh, I'm, I'm very unfortunate. Like I talked about Mike McCarthy, Thomas Sullivan, all these lads. And like I suppose it was a privilege to play against them, but I have some great memories of all these guys and challenges against them. And, and who would you say your best player that you played with, be it a oh. club or county? And I know I haven't really mentioned that great Gary Castle team. You know, yeah. and they were dominated, you know, went to an Ireland final, which, you know, first West Me team yeah. to, do, to do so. Yeah, um, players, that, like Marin Flannery was a great player. Ger Flip, Ger Haven was somebody that kind of looked after me maybe initially when I started playing for West Mead. But like, Big Shock was great to me because if you can remember, Shock's go to the clouds and just pump it into me. But equally, then he'd be minding me as well and looking, making sure that I'd get a big picture of the ball. Um, I, I think I think if Shocker and yourself were playing now, you would be top scorer in the country with marks alone. I know. There you go. Shocker so would have hit, hit your chest every time with it. Dude, like it was. I suppose we developed that relationship maybe twelve years of age. Like so, it just flowed into county. We made ourselves look good, I suppose. But um, no, there's just great players in Westmead. Like and they've always been very talented. That's the one thing I would say. But I'm um, privileged to play with a lot of great lads. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we're going to finish up here. Um, I wish you the best luck going into the Leinster Challenge and to the Sam Maguire qualifiers because we, we can't forget that we are going to be playing into the summer 
and we wish you success as a Westmead manager. Thank and you. you've been a great role model down through the year and we wish you continued success. That's Desi Dolan, our senior football manager. A, a grain of rice is going to tip the scale. Just remember that, lads. With his fourth point of the game, the Westmead supporters are coming under the park. It's over! It's over! Have you seen a better Westmead performance than this they've given in the second half? John Heslin now has a support player, may not need him. Go straight, he's scored! Yeah. And we're back down here by Roxy Brown. The referee's whistle goes, and Westmead are champions. Agony, Roxy Brown, Agony, Bishar Artigan, Moltoni, Scrimini, Hobsier, Borium, Agony, and Oyer, Lahiri. It's back with Kieran Martin, was the captain until he got injured. Here he is, it's Martin! Kieran Martin!